This week in our series of political profiles, we're sitting down with Montgomery County Councilman Phil Andrews, who's running for the Office of County Executive. Welcome, Mr. Andrews. Thank you for Thanks being here. Thanks for having here. me. Now, you've served in, on, as a third district council uh, district since 1998. Mm -hmm. How has government changed since you were first elected to office? Well, a lot has changed. Technology, for one thing, has changed a lot. Remember uh, Y2K and the concern about that and just the amount of information that is coming at us quickly uh, in government is, is striking. Uh, emails are now universal. We almost never get a letter anymore, a straight you know, a former type of personal letter. Uh, so it's faster in that sense, and people expect responses almost immediately after they send you the email because they know you got it, and yet the, the research takes the same amount of time. So there's uh, more communication in, in that way. Uh, there are tighter budgets. That's another difference. Uh, and there is a more diverse and growing population. So are you uh, getting, so is, are, so is, but is, is the, the duties of government, or is it more, exp has, have they expanded? And are there, is there increased focus on what government can do for the citizens? Well, I don't think it's changed fundamentally in that respect. And, and my view of government has not changed dramatically either, which is you want and we need progressive government. And government needs to be responsive to people and needs to be changing to meet people's needs. But you also, uh, government has to make sure that it is uh, responsible in how it spends money and how it plans for the future. So you need that combination of, of long-term thinking uh, and responsiveness to the individuals that are coming before you. Now, when you were first elected to the council, one of your opponents, County Doug Duncan, was the county executive. Right. And one of your other opponents, mm -hmm. Isaiah Leggett, the right. current county executive, was the council president. That's right. Now, you've talked about change. Yes. So, what is it that you're trying to change about well, Montgomery County? Well, what I want to change is I want to get our economic edge back so that we can continue to be on the cutting edge of progressive policies. Uh, but that, that requires fiscal responsibility. And let me give you some examples about how we got to change if we're going to get our economic edge back. One, uh, and this is good because we control it, we need to be much more responsible in how we approve salary and benefit increases because that's what drives the budget. Seventy percent of our county operating budget are salaries and benefits. So the county executive is a person that negotiates those. And we need a county executive, unlike uh, my opponents, who's going to look at this, the long-term sustainability of those contracts because that's what drives the budget, that's what drives tax rates, and that's what squeezes things out that people want us to do, like library hours, like infrastructure repair, like uh, protecting the land. Uh, those things get squeezed out. And on top of that, the state is piling these huge responsibilities onto the county, like the teacher's pension shift, which is an unfunded mandate. It's a $60 million increase to our budget, which we don't control because we don't actually approve the teacher's salaries on the council. Uh, we don't set pension benefits and we don't invest the funds. But now we're being sent a bill for a huge amount. And they've tied our hands on school funding as well with an extreme maintenance of effort law. So we are, we are going to have increased challenges because of what the state has done. So we've got to make sure that we are We've got our A game uh, in Annapolis if we're going to protect ourselves. Well, it's not just the state. I mean, we, 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 we compare ourselves on this show. We do a lot of discussing about are we competitive with Fairfax County? Oh, yeah. Are we competitive with, with the state of Virginia? Are we right. competitive with Prince George's County? Mm -hmm. I mean, we look at our competitive nature, and we sometimes wonder if Montgomery mm -hmm. County is doing all that it can to, to be competitive in that regard. Oh, and we're not. Uh, take the energy tax, for example. The energy tax of Montgomery County is by far the highest in the region. And you're right, we're competing with Northern Virginia, we're competing with the district, we're competing with uh, other counties in Maryland for jobs, uh, and increasingly so. And the energy tax is probably the single uh, biggest difference between our, our taxes and those other places. And it's a huge disincentive for companies that are energy intensive to come here. Well, I'll tell you, what, from my, my own personal experience as a practicing attorney, mm -hmm. one of the biggest problems we have is, is the change in stormwater management and the increased costs that we're seeing. Yes, it's important to save, save the bay, mm -hmm. but those costs have to get borne by somebody. And not only do the, are there increased costs, mm -hmm. but they slow down the development process. So we've, you know, we, we've got to find a way to balance these, these, these things between development and growth mm -hmm. and all the programs that we, that we want to do. Well, the things we can control, that stormwater mandate came down from the state, so we're responding to that. But we can control our tax rates and we can control our own spending, and we need to do both. All right, one of the other issues that you've championed has been public financing of elections. Mm -hmm. Why did you decide to do that? Well, I've, uh, I think a lot of people know, but not everybody. I used to be the executive director of Common Cause in Maryland. I led the fight for campaign reform, and I'm committed to making government more accountable to the public as a whole. I don't take any campaign funds from interest groups, and I haven't since I first ran for the county council 20 years ago. 
And I want to establish a system that will give other candidates the ability to run campaigns without relying on special interest money. So the public financing system would allow that to happen because if you participate in that system, you couldn't accept contributions from interest groups. You'd be limited to contributions of $150 from individuals, and you get all of those that you want because uh, that's not a problem. But we need to reduce the influence that interest groups have through campaign funds. Developers, unions, uh, corporations all have a lot of influence through that, and it's, turning, it's turned people off, and we've seen the dysfunction at the federal level, partly because of that and partly because of the extreme gerrymandering. Uh, that's gone on at the, at the uh, state level. <laughs> well, we, I, I love the gerrymandering issue is one that, one that we, 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 we chew up endlessly. Mm -hmm. Why don't we have nine separate districts for the county council instead of the four at large? I mean, we have no political mm -hmm. diversity here in Montgomery County. Don't you, th don't you, would you champion that kind of diversity? Well, I did, actually. I did support going to nine districts oh, back in 2004. Great. I was one of the, only, I think I was the only council member at the time that supported that. Well, I like you even more than I used to, Phil. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> the, and the reason is, it's really, I, there's not a problem in having out large districts in a smaller jurisdiction like Rockville, but Montgomery County has a million people, and for candidates to be able to sort of break into an at large district that's bigger than six states is, is not reasonable. So our districts, if we split them up to nine, would actually all be bigger, or at least the same size, roughly, of the state delegate and state senate races. Now you, you touched on the fact that you, that that uh, public uh, that uh, uh, special interests may have too much influence, and mm -hmm. one of the issues uh, I think that we hear is that unless you're an insider, unless you're in a union, you really don't have a voice. Uh, so are unions got too big a role here? Well, I don't blame unions for doing whatever they want to do, for asking for what they want. That's their job. Uh, I blame elected officials when they don't make good decisions. So the problem is, look, uh, candidates are, and officials are human, they respond to incentives. And so if the incentive is to go out and raise $6,000 checks from, uh, from interest groups, and that's the easiest way to raise the money they need, they're going to do that. The public financing system will give them an alternative because if you raise a certain amount of small individual contributions from registered county voters, you can get a matching public funds that will help you raise what you need. Mr. Anderson, I want to thank you for being here. Today. Thank you. Good luck in your election. Thank you for having me.